So as you know, I had a judge restrict all my civil liberties, even though I was never arrested or convicted of a crime. It kind of reminds me of a, <laughs> I guess it's kind of a funny story. I remember one time I told my ex-wife, this is when I was in the Navy, that I was going to go out with the guys. And she says, no, you're not. She had something else planned I'd forgotten about. I said, yes, I am. I have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's in the Declaration of Independence. And she said, well, you're not going to have much of a life. And as far as happiness, <laughs> never again. Something to that effect. It, it was a joke. The whole thing was a joke. But it, it is kind of true. I mean, once you get married, you don't have any freedoms. Recently, I made a quote. Not a quote. I said something on a video. And I, I didn't even really think about what I was saying too much. I mean, I believe what I was saying. That's why I said it. But I didn't really put it into the context that a lot of viewers put it into. And one person actually wrote it in the comment section, so I screenshotted it. It says, uh, what I said in the video and what this woman wrote, we can claim freedom all we want until you realize you're not free, you'll never be free. As soon as you realize you're not free, you'll be able to figure out how to be free. We can claim freedom all we want. Until you realize you're not free, you'll never be free. As soon as you realize you are not free, you'll be able to figure out how to be free. And, and that's true, and that's exactly what I've done. I, I know I'm not free. You know, I hear people all the time spouting off the Constitution. Ah, Constitution says I can do this or I can do that. Well, what's funny is people will say what the Constitution says that literally doesn't say it. For example, it was kind of funny. Somebody spouted off, the Second Amendment says I can own a gun. So if you read the Second Amendment, it doesn't say anything about owning a gun. It says you have a right to bear arms. It means you have a right to carry a firearm in defense. And I know this terminology now because there is a judge in Colorado, 90-year-old judge appointed by Jimmy Carter, who has said that you do not have a right to purchase a firearm. Now, I, I want to think about this for a minute. When you... When you think about a firearm, a firearm is just a tool, at least that's my consideration of it. This is a 22 SR-22, and I use it all the time around here on the property. Of course, I carry. I carry it out on the streets, but it, you know what's really funny is I've never used it out on the streets, but I use it here constantly. I just had a raccoon the other day. A possum was in the chicken run just last night, and the only reason I saw it was because its eyes glowed. I had my headlamp on. And I was able to use this and, and got him. So had a couple what I would consider rabid raccoons. I'm not sure they were rabid, but so I use my 22 to defend myself and my chickens and my property from wildlife more than I've ever used it against people. But when you think about that tool, you can go to the hardware store, pick up a chainsaw, a nail gun. I worked for a company that made gas powered. Butane powered nail guns, Pazload. I worked for Pazload and they made nail guns without having the need to hook up to an air compressor. Of course, you had to change the tank. And I always thought, you know, that's just as dangerous. Of course, they didn't have the rifling and all that stuff, but it was significantly dangerous. But you can go out and buy all these dangerous items. You can go out and buy gunpowder, lead. I mean, think about lead. Lead's dangerous. Get it on your fingers. You can go out and buy bullets, you can go out and buy a bunch of stuff. But you can't buy a gun without having a license or a background check or paperwork, be scrutinized, you have to have ID, all kinds of things. Here's what I want you to think about. There is nothing else in the Constitution anywhere that says you can have a tool other than a gun. I can go and buy a chainsaw or a pneumatic nail gun without all these background checks, but I can't buy the one thing the Constitution says I can buy or have, depending on who you believe. I mean, if we believe this judge in Colorado, apparently we can't buy it. We don't have a right to buy it, but we have a right to buy everything else. But the thing that's called out in the Constitution, no, nope, you don't have a right to. So there's my point about you can claim that you're free all you want, but you're not really free. One of the problems I think we have about freedoms in this country is no one's actually read the Constitution. I've read it word for word many times, and I can actually come up with different interpretations for the Constitution. 
the Constitution isn't exactly clear in a lot of areas. And co it can lead to interpretation. Of course, the Supreme Court is supposed to clarify these interpretations, but it, it doesn't. I mean, they, they do, but they don't really have an, a way to enforce it. So my interpretation of the Second Amendment is I have a right to carry a firearm on my side for defense. But a way a, another person is going to interpret it and do interpret it is only people in a well-regulated militia can't have the right to bear arms. Which one's correct? Of course, we've heard from the Supreme Court, but we have a president who believes the second, that it's only a well-regulated militia. Nobody else should have one. And there's a lot of things in interpretation. I mean, like this guy who probably has never read it, I have a right to buy and own a firearm. It's in the Constitution. Nowhere does it say that. So we haven't read it. Now, I, I, the reason I read it was I homeschooled my daughter. And so I read it several times and I did a lot of research on it, a lot trying to figure out the different interpretations and the way I believed and the way I would like for my daughter to believe. And I know somebody out there, you're forcing your beliefs on your daughter. That's how you do it. You raise your children to have your morals and standards. But I, I realize that nowadays we're supposed to have, raise our children to have morals and standards of the devil. But that's beside the point. That's a whole different conversation. I realize I'm not free. I realize that judges do take my rights away from them as I interpret them without even consent. They just do it. One of the things that people tell me all the time is, don't let them into your house without a warrant. Whoever they are, you know, police, FBI, ATF, whoever that is. I see hear that in the comment sections all the time. And I've told the story just recently. I watched the video. I don't believe the woman was actually doing anything wrong, but the police department got a call that somebody tripped the fire alarm in an apartment building. Well, this woman was out in the parking lot when the police arrived and they wanted to talk to her. They didn't detain her. They didn't say that you're under arrest or that you're being detained. They said, hey, come here, I wanna to talk to you. And she's like, no, and she kept walking. And she walked into her apartment. So there's a whole bunch of police officers having, I, I didn't understand it, but it, it appeared they had to go over a railing. It wasn't like they could just walk on to the uh, back porch. They had to go over a railing to get onto the back porch. The window was open. The door was closed and locked, but the window was open. So one of the police officers proceeded to go into the door. Another officer said, you don't have a warrant. So he backed out. And she the entire time is screaming, you don't have a warrant, you don't have a warrant. My interpretation of that is, is let me see your warrant. Regardless, she has made it clear that she knows they don't have a warrant to come in her house. But she has a knife in her hand. Now, we could all assume, oh my gosh, she's going to come out of that window and fly and, and cut those police officers. That's what the police officers believed. Or we could also think she's in her house, maybe she's trying to cook dinner, and she has a knife in her hand. I got an idea. Let's shoot her through the window and the door. So they did. They didn't have a warrant. They didn't have a warrant to do anything. They violated this woman's rights completely. And, and when I tell this story, People look at it like, well, it's just one person. Okay, that was terrible. Do we understand what a right is? You have a right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. The Declaration says it, not the Constitution. But we have a Constitution that supports that statement. This woman doesn't have life. She doesn't have liberty. And she cannot pursue happiness when she's buried. Once you realize that we do not have rights in this country, you start to figure out that you have to find your own happiness, your own freedom. I made a joke about that, my, my first wife and, and me, talking about the life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. One of the mistakes people make, and I am completely convinced of this, is they interact with other people. So you live in a city or a small municipality. Think about it. My wife can restrict the things I want to do. I want to be free. I want to go out and socialize. I want to go out and shoot guns. I want to, you know, whatever. And the wife says, no, no, you're not. Well, I want to go out and spend money. No, no, you're not. So that's just one person. Now that person I have dedicated myself to. So I respect her decisions that she doesn't want me to go do certain things. And th that's fine. I completely understand that. But then when you get in a municipality or even friendships or neighbors and you start socializing with these people, they will start restricting your rights. So the other day I was talking about wood stoves and I'll put an up next box to that video at the end of this video. 
But, and that will have the quote at the end of the video, so I'd like for you to watch it all the way through. It actually didn't do very well. I was hoping it would do better, but it didn't do very well. So if you could actually help pick up the, the views on that, I'd appreciate it. I was explaining how some people want to make their own wood stoves. And so what ends up happening is now the EPA puts regulations on the wood stoves that they're manufactured and so the wood stove prices go up so the person who wants to buy a wood stove because they don't have, know how to make a wood stove can't afford it. So they just reduced one person, this person's freedoms of making a wood stove, reduced this person's freedoms of buying one because the EPA jumped in because of this guy over here making their own. Or you make your own wood stove and you're just putting out the smoke into the air and you live in a municipality, and your neighbor Jane, she calls in over to the city hall and says, hey, John's over there just smoking me out. It's flaring up my asthma. He's got his wood stove going and pumping out the smoke. The next city hall meeting, city hall says, did you hear about Jane and her asthma? They ended up having to call the ambulance on her. We need to make a law so John can't run his wood stove anymore. Okay, no problem, we'll run a law. So next time John lights up his wood stove, the County commissioner comes out, the code inspector comes out. Somebody's come out and they're measuring the, the air quality and you violated the air quality. Oh no, he's grandfathered. He has a wood stove before the law was implemented. Yeah, but he is now polluting the air today. That wasn't back then. So they knock on the door and they hand you a big old fine. You know, two or three thousand dollars polluting the air. Well, you could have just went out and bought an efficient wood stove and made everybody happy but no your freedoms were more important than Jane's freedoms and this is what happens when you have neighbors and you interact with people and you start to tick people off then everybody's rights are restricted so one of the biggest problems with your freedoms is you literally hand them off to somebody else you know they always say your freedoms end at the tip of my nose and that's true John's freedoms ended at Jane's nose and since it went up her nose she restricted John's freedoms it's a two-way street, and we don't know how to get along in this country anymore, so I have tried to figure out how to be free knowing there are no freedoms anymore. I can't just go and buy a gun without a bunch of background checks that I don't want to go through. I, I have in the past, but I don't want to do it anymore. I'm just tired of all that background checks and my dad gave me several guns and i've had this 22 for a long time so i'm trying everything i can not to be put on the radar with guns people talk about warrants i mentioned warrants earlier i meant to mention this but we instantly give up our freedoms all the time i see it all the time people got that phone in front of their face non-stop you want a warrant for somebody to come in and, and check your personal data and check your personal information but then you put this thing in front of your face and then you take it all around with you and they're tracking it. And I'm not being a conspiracy theorist. We know this is happening. We've seen news articles where the White House or the administration has gotten a warrant to go to Google and look for your information. Or in some cases, they don't even get a warrant. I, I should back up. Some cases, they don't even get a warrant. The other day, they asked one of these auction sites for a list of names who were buying components to make their own gun, which is totally legal especially here in the state of Missouri, it's totally legal. So state patrol went and got this information from an auction site, and then they started going door to door looking for this, these pieces. So they don't even need a warrant anymore. They can literally just know that you have it now, that you bought it, how much you paid for it. Banks are giving up information without warrants. Some police department wants the information on you and your spending habits. Oh, here, here you go. So they don't need warrants anymore. So we live in this illusion that we are free, we have constitutional rights. You don't have constitutional rights. The Constitution was ripped up decades ago, and we pretend like we still have it, but then we put people in office who ignore it, and they're not even trying to hide it anymore. They straight up will tell you, we're not interested in the Constitution. There isn't one person in Congress that has actually read the Constitution. I bet, well, there may be a couple, but I'm pretty sure that most of them either don't interpret it correctly, or the way we think they should interpret it, or they just haven't read it, or they just don't care what it says. They may know what it says, or they, they just don't care. For example, this is the White House, not Congress, but for example, the Supreme Court decided that the White House could not force landlords to keep tenants who were not paying rent during the lockdowns. So that meant land, the tenants could stay there indefinitely without paying rent. Well, the Supreme Court said, no, no, you can't do that. That's unconstitutional. 
Well, what did the White House do? They continued doing the same thing. Nobody changed anything. So no, you don't live in freedom, but you can be free. You have to disconnect from society. I don't talk to anybody. There isn't anybody around here that knows my name very well. I don't interact. I don't go to the community events. I don't go to the community center. I don't go to the 4th of July celebrations, nothing. I stay here. When somebody comes onto my property, I immediately tell them they're trespassing and they have to leave. It's safer that way. People get in your business and then they'll do everything they can. Eventually, it will eventually happen. They will eventually do something that will restrict your freedoms. So if you click this up next box, it'll take you to that video where I was talking about that quote about freedoms. So I, so I hope I can inspire you to realize you're not free. So you can live your dreams. Thanks for watching.